So höflich ist er. Wie ist er? Er wollte sich umziehen und etwas ja. anderes anziehen. Bestimmt. Okay. Da hat bestimmt was noch dabei. Warte, warte. Wie geht das mit diesen Fragen? Okay, 1200 Leute sind live. Das ist okay, hey guys. One second, I'm trying to figure out something. Oh, uh, okay, you can actually put your questions here, I think, and then I can answer it. Check this out. Um, okay, guys. Thank you very much for making it. Seid ihr auch alle live dabei? Ich mach. Wir sind jetzt 2100 Leute. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to answer your questions. I will wait for some more people. And then we're going to choose your questions. So, oh, I see already you're submitting your questions. Check this out. I'm going to choose one. Uh, <clears throat> this is, for example, a very common question, right? How to start business without money? You guys see that? Sieht man das? Die Frage? Ah, there you go. Okay, okay, okay. Nice. You see, guys, so this is a question everybody wants to get answered, I feel like. Why? Um, by the way, we just worked out in the gym, so I'm a bit out of breath. Und für die Leute aus Deutschland, ich werde auch ein bisschen deutsche Fragen beantworten. Dann machst du mir das ein bisschen einfacher für euch. Guys, I'm speaking in German as well, because some of you have asked German questions. <coughs> anyway. So, um, how to start a business without money? So that is... Alright, I think we are all ready now. There's enough people. So the question, this one is very common. It's, it's usually misunderstood. Because question is not how to start a business without money. Usually you don't start a business without any money. But does it have to be your money? That's the question, right? So most people misunderstand this because they think they got to put their own money into the business. And usually there is something called either an equity investment. So somebody, an investor who comes in and that's his investment, that's his job. So either they invest their money and you sell your shares or something called debt investment. So basically you take credit from somebody, a loan could be a bank, it could be from friends or family, and there's different ways of actually starting a business without having your own money. I mean, there's usually six ways of starting a business in terms of funding a business. You could obviously bootstrap. That is something where you start a business, but um, reinvest the profit you make into the business to grow it, right? And some of the business models, they allow to do so. Usually, Businesses which broker deals where you don't have to put your own capital or any capital and you make some money, but you will grow organically, relatively slow, right? So that's basically what, what bootstrapping is. So you reinvest your money, your profits and grow slowly uh, into a level where you can actually uh, build a team or expand your products or geographically. So having said that, it doesn't have to be your money and... In my book, which is coming up, I've extensively talked about this because it's a very common question. How do you start a business without money? And um, so we're going to talk about this uh, extensively in the book. <clears throat> and if you want to participate in this live, you can also request. And I'm going to allow a few people to actually ask the questions live. So let's see. Oh, there's a lot of questions coming in. So, <clears throat> so let's see. I'm going to choose a few more. <laughs> okay. How to start a startup. Okay, this is also interesting. Guys, you might see this, right? So we already answered the question about how to start a business without any money. Here's another question because I get this a lot as well. How to start a business 
in Dubai, right? If I don't know anything about the market. And how did I do it? So I'm going to start this relatively simply by keeping it general. So you start a business in Dubai and Dubai is a city. It's not a country, right? So people misunderstand this. So when you say you want to start a business in Dubai, you pretty much mean the UAE, where you could choose Dubai as one of your, uh, uh, maybe as a headquarter. So Dubai is actually very, very friendly towards entrepreneurs. It is one of the places which has understood how important entrepreneurship is for the country and for the city. So we have a common misconception. People think you need a so-called local sponsor to do business. Um, yes, there are few activities, especially when you're selling to consumers in the mainland that you would need, especially physical products, you would need a local sponsor. Uh, somebody who is a national who can actually sponsor your business. But most of the businesses don't require that, especially tech businesses. You can go into so-called free zones. And these free zones allow you to own 100% of your own company. And you could start it within a week. It's super simple. There's many agencies who allow you uh, to even outsource uh, those uh, that paperwork. So you can easily do that, right? Just Google a business startup or business setup in Dubai or in the UAE and you'll find many agencies who will help you do that. And yes, you can do this um, without selling shares or giving shares to a local sponsor, especially if you are active in um, online, right? So uh, just inform yourself. Usually that is not an issue. Now, what do you do? If you say, I don't know anything about the market, then I would definitely research that because that is one of the most important success factors for your business to, to know your market, right? So make sure you understand that. I'm going to uh, skip to, and by the way, I've explained that in my book as well. You can go to my profile and there's a link and register for that book, pre-register for free. And then when it comes out, you will be one of the first to know. Uh, let me check this out next. So there's a lot of questions. Obviously, I'm going to choose the ones which are business related. Um, <clears throat> ah, this is this is very, very interesting because this is also one of the common questions. Have you invested in cryptocurrencies? <laughs> so. <clears throat> Cryptocurrencies, everybody's talking about it. So one of my friends uh, came to me in 2015, 14 or 15. It's around six, seven years ago and said, oh, you have to invest into this thing called um, Bitcoin. And um, I don't know, Bitcoin was like $250 or something like that, $240 around that time. And... He was a wealthy man and he, he did he put all his money in there almost and now he's retired but I usually don't invest into things I don't understand right and I didn't understand it well back then a few years later I've played around with it but I'm not heavily invested into cryptocurrencies um, I urge you to um, remember a few things one you need to understand the things you're investing into. The reason why you should invest into something is because you understand it, not because others are doing it. At the same time, I believe this is a huge discussion, right? Um, does it add value um, to, the, to humanity? Is it a viable option to fiat currency? These are questions which... Um, I have contemplated and I've talked to many uh, cryptocurrency influencers and I have uh, had these discussions for years now. Now, this is something which com comes up now because it's kind of uh, hyped during a money oversupplied society we have nowadays. But be cautious in um, these things where you the only reason why you're investing into it is because someone else is planning to pay you more for it in the future be careful um, I'm going to refrain from giving my opinion into if you should do it or not 
I think uh, be careful with over investing yourself into any asset class. It could be cryptocurrencies, but it could also be gold or even fiat or even even shares. Be careful on uh, not diversifying yourself uh, enough. Um, but um, you know, a lot of people believe uh, jumping off the plane they can fly until the ground proves them wrong. So be careful with that. Generally, um, the biggest risk I believe uh, you have is uh, governments, because you know uh, crypto currencies could pose as currency competition. Now, currency competition has faced many barriers in the past. So this has hundreds of years of uh, history. So this is some nothing new. There's never been. Uh, there's always been um, stories like these where uh, governments have put on uh, the brakes when when there was currency competition. So make sure that uh, you understand these risks and that some governments, especially the powerful ones, would be very reluctant to give up their some uh, their monopoly on money, right? But I love new ideas and I believe. Um, people who think different are the ones who change the world. And if it does change the world, I think it's for the better. Uh, if it doesn't, it will just be uh, like we've seen in the past few hundred years where there have been comp competing currencies coming up and being destroyed by governments over time. So, um, next. Let me see. So many questions. I'm just going to, you know, just choose some which just show up. Okay. Here is another one which uh, comes up a lot. So how do you, how do you manage your time? Right? So managing my time. I think this is, again, this is an important topic I've discussed in my book. Uh, and and it starts with it actually. It's in the first chapter where I'm talking about, um, sorry, <coughs> where I'm talking about entrepreneurship and the entrepreneurial spirit. The book uh, emphasizes on the difference between uh, successful entrepreneurs and the ones who are not successful. And one of my uh, hypotheses is that the ones who are successful are managing their mental energy correctly, allocating them uh, correctly. What does that mean? So it basically means that you have 24 hours like anybody else has, and you have a so-called mental energy, or you can call it cognitive bandwidth. You have like two hours of peak performance time where you really perform best, then you have another three to four hours of high performance time. And then the rest is medium and low energy, right? So you need to make sure that within your two hours of peak performance, you really do the things which are your plans and your crises. That's where it goes to, right? Because if you allocate your peak performance time to chilling with your friends in a bar, then you're wasting your energy, right? So make sure you don't have to work 16 hours a day, right? You have to make sure that you allocate your peak performance energy to the important tasks you have. These are your plans, which are high importance and non-urgent non tasks. And you have crises, which are high importance and high urgency. These are the times where you allocate your peak performance times. And the rest, chilling with your friends, low energy, right? You do this at night when you kind of your body is chilling down. So that is something which is very important. Manage your time, allocate your cognitive bandwidth uh, accordingly. Again, this is something I'm covering in my book. So if you want to have more details about that, please do uh, read it. But obviously, it's not out yet. It's still being edited by, so proofread and edited by the professionals. I have written it. I have not used any 
uh, ghostwriter, but obviously I need professionals who read over it and make it look nice and sound nice, right? So having said that, in my profile, there is a link uh, where you can pre-register and you will know first. Let me check a few more questions, guys. So, <clears throat> let's say... Uh, so, okay, here. This is another important thing. Business or job? <laughs> business. Business, business, right? Business or job? I think that's a really good question. I believe you mean with business, you mean entrepreneurship versus job, which should stand for working for somebody, right? Um, that's a very good question. So <clears throat> let me tell you something, because... I'm going to give you an example. There's something called the spiner, spider in the urinal thought experiment. What does that mean? So this is a professor. I think his name was Professor Nagel. He actually uh, came up with a thought experiment when he saw a spider, you know, a spider in the urinal. Or in other words, in the toilet. There was a spider hanging. And every day people were going there and doing their things and the spider was struggling to get out of there, right? And he thought, well, I'm going to save that spider. I'm going to pull it out and put it on the ground so he could, it could survive. So it doesn't drown one day, right? And the next day he comes back to the toilet and he sees the dead spider. So... What does that mean? It means what he thought was good for the spider actually ended up killing the spider. And that's what I want to say. Whatever I believe is good for you doesn't necessarily mean it's good for you. All seeing is perspective seeing. So take this as a disclaimer when I always push you for entrepreneurship or even uh, for your job. Decide for yourself. But I believe entrepreneurship will give you something which is super important. The skill sets of making, of getting things done and getting rid of one important thing. If something is wrong, you want to have the skill sets to make it right, to solve problems, to combine resources, to make things happen. So I researched that. I looked at the most influential and powerful people in the past 5,000 years. I, I looked at all the rankings. I researched a lot. And I'm, I made a list. And then I categorized them and said, okay, what, who were these people and what were they doing? And I took the top 10. And on top, 42% of them were political influencers, emperors, uh, leaders politically. The second most uh, influential people were <clears throat> scientists, right? You know a lot of them. Probably you know Albert Einstein, for example, is the most influential and most famous scientist you probably know, right? So these people were also very influential and they, they were a second to the top. And then there were others, like uh, people from philosophy, people from religious leaders, right? Entrepreneurs and so on. And then I realized from those categories, there's only three left today, which can make you influential, powerful. And when there is something wrong that you can actually change it because power is the ability to enforce change. So having said that, there's only left politics, Science and entrepreneurship. I think nowadays it's very difficult to become a religious leader, very difficult to change anything with philosophy. Or uh, polymath is very difficult nowadays. I think realistically speaking, there's only three areas left. And all of those three, I realized, and that is extensively discussed in my book, have one common denominator, one common thing. And that's heavy financial support. I'm telling you, 
It costs $1.6 billion to become the U.S. president. Why do I say this? I mean, that's the campaign spending uh, Joe Biden had, right? And he won. And by the way, the last 20 years have shown us that the candidates who spent most on their campaigns ended up winning. Except two times, except twice. The re-election re campaign of Obama, he spent a little bit less than Kerry and he won. But he was already president, so it's easier to gain media. And Donald Trump, he only had almost half the spending of Hillary Clinton, but he had a lot of free media. So having said that, usually the more you spend, the uh, more likely you will win the presidency. So it seems like financial support is very important in, po in politics as well. The second one is science, right? So I looked at this as well and said, well, does science have to do anything with money? So I looked at the uh, spending of countries, the R&D spending, that's called research and development spending per capita. That means per person in a country uh, if, uh, uh, as a percentage of GDP, right? And I said, does it mean that you will produce more influential scientists if you spend more money on research and development? And I looked at the number of Nobel laureates, the, the people who have actually won Nobel Prizes in those countries or from those countries. And there's a huge correlation. That means basically the more a country spends on research and development, the more influential scientists they produce. Hmm. So another reason why financial support seems to have an influence over science and scientists as well. So what's left? Left is entrepreneurship. And if you look at those entrepreneurs, the ones who have, um, uh, who, who have most investments are also more likely to, to succeed, right? And that's something that entrepreneurial skill set involves heavily the ability to raise money from investors, right? I think one of the most important uh, skill sets of a CEO or founder is to ensure the financial stability of your company. And that is by convincing investors, unless you are so rich and can finance everything yourself or bootstrap it, which is very rarely possible unless you're doing a small business. But if you want to do, make a, a business big, if you build an empire, you need to have the ability to convince investors. Having said that, all three areas are all based on the ability to get financial support. Why I say this is, if you want to enforce change, if you want to be powerful, entrepreneurship is one way to get there. Or you do go into politics, or you become a scientist. That's what the last 5,000 years have taught us. So um, that's my opinion on why I believe you should start your own thing. Let's go on. And by the way, this is again extensively, dis extensively discussed in my book. And um, I hope you enjoyed the discussion here. Let me choose a, f a few more questions. <clears throat> uh, okay. So, I'm, look, I'm not trying to talk about myself a lot. Yeah, I want to help as many people as possible with some, some advice here uh, regarding business, not uh, necessarily about myself. Uh, <clears throat> so, let me see some. I've discussed a few questions already here. Without knowing, you've asked me, um, a similar question, so that I have given that already. Uh, <clears throat> so here you go. Okay, now here's a question which I also get a lot What is your opinion on network marketing? Now, guys. <clears throat> there's a lot of business models we can discuss. I mean, I'm getting tens of thousands of those um, via startuphero.com. So if you want to submit your business ideas, do there and you'll get your answers. Now, having said that, 
generally speaking, there are two things which make a business powerful, right? And then you can basically still trickle and boil them down into sub sub elements of those. But two of them are super important. One is its scalability. That means how big can it become, right? And that does, doesn't necessarily mean, uh, well, I have a flower shop and I can uh, supply the whole world with it, right? That's not really scalable unless you can automatically do that, right? So that's why tech-supported or tech-based companies are super, super powerful because they have scalability. But scalability alone will not be enough. The second one is called defensibility. What does that mean? Right? Defensibility means how can you protect your business? How can you protect your business when it gets to a certain level? Right? How difficult is it, is it to just push you out of the market? And that's where other things come in, such as network effects. Right? Does your business has, have a network effect? What, that, what does that mean? A network effect is very simply uh, explained. I'll, I'll give you an example. Uh, the best network effect in the world probably uh, Google has, right? Google has a search engine. So the more people use Google, the more data Google has. And the more data Google has, the more people use Google, right? So it's this beautiful c cycle where the more people using it, the better the product becomes, and the better the product becomes, more people use it. That's very hard to beat. Marketplaces generally have that, right? For example, um, an example of a marketplace is Amazon. Amazon has a huge network effect because the bigger they become, uh, so more sellers on Amazon mean more choice for buyers. If there are more buyers, then more sellers join. And then again, you have more choice. So it's, again, a beautiful network effect. And there's many examples. And if you look at the best businesses in the world, they all have a network effect, uh, which gives them defensibility. Another uh, defensibility uh, element is a brand, right? However, be cautious with brands, right? You can distinguish yourself with a brand. You can charge more. You can, hire, you can have higher margins with a strong brand. You can have better trust and so on, but brands are very fragile, right? You can destroy brands overnight. So, uh, but that is one of the defense, uh, defense mechanisms a business has. So why I'm saying this, because when you're looking at network marketing, what are you building, right? Uh, are you building a brand? Then go ahead. Are you, uh, do you have any kind of defensibility in your business? And how scalable is it? Again, there's more to this. I'm going to talk about this. I have talked about this in my book. So make sure you check out the details there as well. Um, so, but make sure that your business... Look, I always say this. Building a big business is as much work as building a small business. So choose scalable business models because you're going to work most of your time anyway on it. So uh, avoid those businesses which you cannot protect in the future and which cannot become empires. So uh, business empires. Let me see what else we have here, right? Uh, so a lot of questions I have answered. Okay, this is another one. I'm going to, um, how to be a successful businessman, right? Or woman in this case. Uh, I have also looked at this. I've probably met hundreds of entrepreneurs, uh, great entrepreneurs. And I figured out there are six things which all of them have in common, right? And those six things um, I've discussed, obviously, extensively, as I said in my book. But... Um, I'm going to give you a few examples. One, I believe a successful entrepreneur always, always has a bias towards action. What does that mean, right? 
They'd rather, they'd rather do something than talk about it. It's very, very important to realize that there's only two camps in this world. People who do things and people who talk about it. That's it. There's no such things as half, half pregnant. There's no half pregnant. There's either you're pregnant or you're not. Either you do things or you don't. Because nobody cares about the things you have almost done. Right? You will not go to your grandchildren later and say, you know what I've almost done and when I was young? <laughs> Nobody cares. You haven't done it. So that's one thing. Entrepreneurs have a bias towards getting things done. Action counts. So very high activity levels. Less preparation, more doing. Another thing, and I'm not going to go through all of them, is... Positivity, right? So, problems are good. Like I call my problems, I call them my breakfast. Every morning I wake up and I have another problem I have to solve. And I look at them positively. I say, wow, that's a challenge we can solve. Because don't forget, without a problem, there's no business. Every business solves a problem. Right? So, look at them as opportunities. Um, and that is something which I've seen with good entrepreneurs is that they have this positivity, optimism, that they go and get things done. And um, they don't get demotivated by challenges. They actually get motivated by them. Right. So um, and the rest, please do register in the link in my uh, in my profile, in my bio. There is a link register there so I can let you know when the book gets released. Uh, you've been asking me when it gets released. So I'm waiting for the editor to finish. So. I believe they should have proofread it in the next week or so. Then probably it might take another month or two. But we're working on it. I have done my job. I have written it. Now it's up to them to get it out to you guys. All right? Um, okay. What about... Let me see what else we have. Hmm. Mm. Okay, last thing. What are the qualifications you need for a startup? Mm. Right? I get this a lot as well. Do you, do you need to study at the university to, to become an entrepreneur or to be successful? I have heard that there was an illiterate who became a billionaire. I have heard that somebody who has no clue about computers or technology is now a tech entrepreneur and CEO. Yes. But guess what? Somebody in their company knows how to read and how to read not only words, but also balance sheets and P&Ls and understands the basics of accounting and generally the skill sets a, a business person needs, right? Look, if you can't just drive a car and without a license, right? You need to learn the basics of business. You have so-called, and especially if you get uh, investors, you have uh, fiduciary duties. That means you have certain duties to protect the shareholder value of your company, right? So if you, if you don't understand business basics, then you will probably run out of money and you don't even realize why this has happened. So... One of the success factors of entrepreneurs is also to have the skill sets which are important for running a business. Right? That doesn't necessarily mean you have to learn it in university or you have to learn it uh, in school, but you have to learn it. Right? That's your job. As if you're running a company, you need to know how to run a company. And that is not just mindset. Mindset is one step. Right? But you need the skill sets. Um, to analyze numbers in your business um, and not just give it to somebody, right? You can't outsource everything, especially not core competencies. So um, I recommend you learn that. And again, I have discussed this in my book. If you do not uh, know it, learn it. That's what I can say. Wherever you learn it, but learn it. Now... Um, I have discussed a lot now, I think. Let me see if somebody... Mm, let me see. 
Mm. Where do I see the people who want to go live? Go live. Mm. How does that work? Can somebody tell me how I can invite people uh, to come live? I don't know. Maybe here plus. Is this something? I don't know how this works. Okay. Wow, there's so many people who want to come live. But I don't know how you guys, how I can get you live, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay, let me see if I can find more questions. Hmm. Wow, hundreds of people, it says here, but where do you see the list, actually? Ah, here, I got it. Ah, now I got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. How do I... Give me one second. Okay, I'll just randomly choose... Okay. Oh my god. Hello. <laughs> hey. Good, thank you. So what's your name? My name's Helena. Can I sing you a song? Of course. A song. I love that. Go ahead. Like, so cool. I love you. Like I really love you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. So look guys, let's sing a song with her. Helena, right? Where are you from, Helena? I'm from the UK. I'm from Slough. Okay. Okay. Shout out to the UK. So. Yes. Basically, I should be a When the rain is blowing in your face. And the whole world is on your case. I can offer you a warm embrace. To make you to my love When the shadows and the stars appear And there is no one there to dry your tears Wow I hold you for a million years To make you to my love Wow <laughs> Close so nice, nice, so nice. Thank you so much. That was great. You know, I have a studio in Dubai, right? A music studio. You should come and record there. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you record songs? I've actually sung in front of S1. Oh, wow. Yes. Um, so why, did, why didn't he make you into a star? Ramsey official, Mumsy Stranger. <laughs> also, Ash King. And I've also sung in front of, um, there's plenty of people, like LEC Music. Wow. You're so talented. I love that. I love that. So uh, do you plan to um, make your own album or something? Or is this just a hidden talent you, you, don't, you don't really plan to? Huh? I know you like art, basically. Mm-hmm. I'm going to show you some art pictures. <laughs> Get in the light. <laughs> I'm a Gemini. Sorry, I'm a bit shaken up. Because... <laughs> <laughs> um, That's so cute, man. <laughs> basically. Oh, wow. What is... Oh, that's a horse, right? You made this? Yeah, I made this. That's so beautiful. You're really a talented artist. Thank you. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. I'm going to let a few more, a few other people in as well, Lina. I appreciate the time you've taken and thank you for all the support. And please continue doing your thing. Focus yeah. on your passion. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Lina. 
So let's see who else we have here. Mm, I don't know. It's really random for me because I don't know the people and I don't know what is going to happen. Just, you know, <laughs> let's just figure it out. I don't how. Okay, who's this? What's happening? <laughs> okay. okay, I don't see you. Who was that? <laughs> okay, well, maybe she didn't have, uh, well, he didn't have. Good connection. Maybe. Yeah, maybe good connection. Yeah. Let's see if we find another one. How do you, like, I don't even know. It's very difficult to choose because there's so many. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what's going to happen now. It's so, it's like, <laughs> okay, guys. Who's here? Okay, let's choose, a, let's choose another person. And this is so, you know, I've never done this because it's, it's really exciting you don't know who or what is going to show up <laughs> wait 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 I Here. Don't know for who it's more exciting <laughs> okay let's see let's see let's see who else we have here mm. <clears throat> guys there's so many it's just okay random let's go who's that Hello. Oh, now you're both. <laughs> That's funny. We have two. Hey, guys. What's your name? Hi. I'm Kezia. My name is Sanya. Hi. Where Sanya. You from? Sanya. Sanya, where are you from? I am from India. Hey. And and what was it? Gazia? No, Kezia. I am from Meerut. It's near Delhi. Are you very... I think one of you guys has a, a slow connection. Oh, am I am I visible? Am I yeah, visible you, to you? You both are visible. I think there's oh, right. a small delay in, in the audio, but it's fine. You guys have a question? I do have a question. Okay, go ahead. You go first. I am really a big fan of yours. I watch your every video and everything, whatever you say. Thank and you. I know, I really appreciate you by heart. And I have a question like, how can I start my own business? I'm like really fond of everything. But there is a bad draw in my life. Uh, I lost my father. Oh. I am having a, yeah, just mama and my younger brother. And I really need to do something. Uh, and uh, what to say? How can I start my business? First of all, like something you really need to do. Uh, Sonia, uh, that's really sad to hear. Um, so I love your uh, passion for entrepreneurship. Generally, I mean, this uh, is a very common question, right? So how do I start my business? Do, do you yeah. already, so are you just at the beginning? So you don't have an idea. You just, you just know that you want to do something. I'm just a toddler. Okay, so you're a toddler. That basically means you are in the first stage. And that's what I call the entrepreneurial, exactly. the entrepreneurial spirit, right? You, yeah. are, you, you got the mindset, but you just don't know the next step, right? Many, right, many, right, right. And many, many people are in this uh, situation. I totally understand this. Look, I was uh, 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 teaching at the university for several years. And yeah, okay. I asked, I asked, the first question I always ask was, anybody of you uh, has a business idea or ever had a business idea? And many people yeah. had some kind of an idea, right? Some kind, or they said, oh, this could be a good business or that could be a good business. Right, and, then right, my, right. and my question then was, who of you guys made it a business, started a company? And then almost nobody did. And that was really oh. sad because I feel like many people have the entrepreneurial spirit. Many people have even a vague idea of a business, but then right. they don't know the steps to make it a company, right? Exactly. 
Yeah. And that is why I'm here. That's why exactly why I taught my classes in university. That's why I've written a book. That's why I'm doing videos. I'm not doing this obviously for That is why I'm your fan, your biggest fan. Thank you. I appreciate it. So basically and that is a very common thing because yeah. from where you are now to your own company that is not luck. That is purely um one step at a time. And obviously when you when you climb when you climb a mountain you don't think you don't think about the top now you focus on to the next step right the top is just the vision but i think the next step is what counts so i think your right. next step is to figure out what business you should go for right and there's okay. many ways one thing is for example are you are you uh, following um blogs where people talk about new business ideas or business models. I do follow everything everything the speeches yeah. their techniques their strategies and everything So do you for example I mean in India there's a lot of uh, successful tech companies which I have uh, been following for example uh, many years back some companies started called Flipkart right So where do you think yeah. these people got their ideas Or well, now there's a uh, business models which are coming uh, to India which have been very successful in other markets and that's where i'm trying to get to figure out where small or early stage companies in the US mostly are getting funded now and how which business models are getting a lot of attention from investors and you can see this in in tech blogs and investment uh, blogs or news where you just see and read about these models and figure out Hmm. Would this make sense for India, right? And that's all of the successful business models now online in India. I can tell you, they were mostly, probably, not all, but mostly, they were invented in other markets, and that's totally fine. India doesn't have to be an invention. Same as emerging markets generally don't need to be a, a hotbed for inventions. They're good for oh, implementations. Man. Right so you go I, I, go to go to US markets I would say cuz that's usually the pioneer okay. market and figure out which business models are coming up getting investments and then uh, see if it makes sense for your own market and how you analyze this is the next step right and I can obviously I can talk about it for hours now but I have talked about it in my uh, book where you can see the steps how to figure out if the business idea makes sense for your market and then how to how to build a team how to get investment right this is all that's the good news it's all a to do list it's not luck i mean luck is just a form of i know it's I not luck there is no shortcut for anything people need to understand these things there is no shortcut it's your first of all it's a hard work very important lot of people don't understand they only know we have to do the business there should be a shortcut there is no such magical thing that can happen that is that is correct i mean look right usually if it was very easy then it's either either it's criminal or it's not it has no longevity exactly so exactly. you so at the end of the day uh look we are there is reasons for failure i i want to say this that we are uh, we should not forget about three things one there's people who were born with a severe mental disability right and we are lucky that we are not part of this group but we should not ignore that group right these people have a huge disadvantage and that is a reason for failure another reason right. for failure is to be born in a war zone right many people right. hundreds of millions of people nowadays are living in a war zone and that is another failure reason so we right. are lucky already yes exactly we are already lucky so and we are taking it for granted as well now taking it are, as well. now you are you live in a beautiful country Uh, right. and we should we should now take this we are in pole position we should take this now to figure out how we get there without forgetting the people who are really disadvantaged right, right? not everybody has the same um 
starting position and not everybody can become successful because they have disabilities they are born in war zones at the wrong time wrong place it happens yeah. it and, happens and if you're yeah. not a, if you're not part of that group uh, then you are already lucky and now use that sanya thank you so much for joining us i appreciate it you really added value and uh, it I was hope very I could nice to you to say again god bless you thank you god, god bless, bless you too. appreciate you thank you so much uh -huh. take care Bye. thank you Bye. all right let's choose one more person and then we'll continue uh, uh thank you yes yes can i sing two lines from you for india from india Oh, can i sing it <laughs> you might not know the meaning of the song but it's That's, for you thank you thank you guys and and for all the people listening <laughs> all right mein ke bhi hum na mile tum se na jaane kyun milo ke hai vasare tum se na jaane kyun thank you so much kyun tujhe ko chahe yaar batana pae person from all those oh my god how many people have requested let's see let's see who we can find here okay where is everybody <laughs> you want to sing to <laughs> so let's see let's see let's see who's next and Okay, I'm going to choose who else? Who else? You want to help me? Yes. If I can choose Mr. Ravi, choose one. Wow. Okay. Just let's see who is who is nice. Who is nice? I mean, I have to look at I don't know is it a real profile or a fake profile you know you have to analyze it before you choose so far we got really lucky okay who do we have here mm, let's choose this person hi Hi. What's your name? My name is John. John I'm I from Australia. Thank you for joining. Thank you so much so for joining. So, what's your question and where are you from? I am uh, from Austria. Uh okay. originally I'm Turkish. We can speak Turkish too, but English is better for you. I, I think, think I we can speak German, English, Turkish, but I think for the sake of everybody I think English is the con uh, the language everybody would understand. Okay. Um my question um um let me think. I wasn't prepared for the, that you chose me. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> I am surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised. surprised. Friend, buddy. Um let's go this. What what is your um What is your suggestion for for a young uh a young entrepreneur um at the beginning I mean what is the the best advice uh, of you from you Well it's um thank you for the question first of all I think yeah. I I've talked about it a little bit already but I can kind of uh add on what i have already said so i think for a young entrepreneur as you just said the first thing you should know 
you have a lot of time, right? The best companies measured as the top 1% of the growth startups are founded by people who are 45 years old on average. Mm -hmm. So if you're in your 20s, even in your 30s, you're not late. You have a lot of time. And I think that that gives you a bit of relaxation, I think, right? So don't have the urgency to, you know, uh, think, oh, you're already 40 years old, you're old. You're not. Right? The best companies or measured as the top 1% of st growth startups are founded by 45 years old, year olds on average. So I okay. think that is something a lot of people don't know, right? Um, so try a lot. For example, if, if I always compare entrepreneurship uh, to playing basketball. So if the goal is to hit a three-pointer, right? I tell you, look, and let's say three-pointer is something like a successful company. Yes. So if I told you now go and hit the three-pointer, you have one shot. What's the likelihood of you hitting a three-pointer? Probably very low, right? Almost zero. Now if I told you, okay, um, I give you three shots, then the likelihood is higher, right? And now imagine, I don't give you three shots. I tell you, don't try at all. What's your likelihood? It's zero, yes. right? Huh. So a lot of people don't even shoot. How will they ever hit? And the best ones are who go home, they practice. They have a lot of friends who are also interested in basketball. They talk about it. They practice together. And then they come back. And then I give you three shots. What's the likelihood of hitting? Right? That is entrepreneurship. So most people don't even shoot. Many people think they only have one shot. And they never practice. They don't have yeah. the skill sets. They don't analyze the market. They don't research. They just shoot. That is entrepreneurship. So... When you play basketball, the best ones, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, they didn't just go and shoot. They practice. They have friends around them every day. Every they, day. They read about it. They learn about it. And then they come and then they do their matches. And then they win. Yes. That's how it is. I believe that is entrepreneurship. Um, so I hope this helped you. So make sure of course. you just shoot your shots. And uh, you will hit the three-pointer at one point of time. Because many people will give up on the way. There's not a lot of people sh practicing a lot. Yes. There's not a lot of competition at the top. Thank you so much, guys, for joining. Thank you very much, John, for joining. I appreciate the time mm -hmm. all of you guys have taken. And uh, Thank you. I think we should do this more often. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Have Thank a good you, day. Stephen. Good night. Good night. All right, guys, it's been almost an hour. Have a great and safe day wherever you are. Love you guys. Stay tuned. Okay. Yay. So.